video casts, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, mood disorders. Let's just take a big encompassing broad brush approach, mood disorders. We've talked about this in the past. I've done teachings on mood and depression and anxiety. This is going to be more focused, more specific to a specific area, methylation. Past video casts, we've talked about methylation in very generic terms, how it can affect neural health, obviously neurotransmitter production, uh, even involved in things like cancer, let alone other physiologic disorders and diseases, autism, ADHD, learning disabilities, the list goes on and on and on. Today, this, this little teaching, we want to focus clearly on if I can improve my body's ability to methylate, which I'll re-explain, I um, have the ability to maybe affect, clearly, schizophrenia, depression, and anxiety. So number one, if I methylate well, I can change the process. What does that mean to methylate? Well, I need to have certain pathways, certain chemical pathways taking place in the body. It is critical that I do this. If I don't, no, let me back up a step. There are some of us that have genetic issues, epigenetic tendencies or SNPs that show or that prove to us that we are poor methylators. We need specific nutrients to get the job done. So let me just put it to you this way. If I do not methylate well, the chances, the literature shows that there's increased risk for depression, anxiety, neurologic types of issues by anywhere from the research I've seen, 36 to 73% increase. So, I'm depressed, I'm anxious. It didn't happen to me until I was 27 or 28, or it happened to me when I was in college. Well, there could have been a numerous set of factors. Number one, your lifestyle, toxin exposures, stress, nutrient deficits, all could have been accumulating and creating almost this inertia till the mood disorders finally broke through. When I throw in stress as a youngster, stress in college and high school, poor lifestyle, eating a lot of the wrong types of foods, chemical and toxin exposures, nutrient deficits. Now when I combine that with some genetic tendencies for being a poor methylator, then you can see the potential for expression of that disorder. So, let's back up a step. When I say I'm not methylating, or you say, John, I don't know what you're talking about with this whole methylation issue, let's just cut right to the chase. How can I help you with depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, all these different types of um, disorders? How can I help you? Well, well, number one, if I can improve those pathways... I will make brain neurotransmitters such as dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and so on. I will make them more efficiently. Well, what do these guys do? Well, they help to maintain central balance. They keep me balanced. If I methylate well and I overcome some of my genetic tendencies... And then I can begin to correct some of my toxin, lifestyle, stress exposures. And then I correct nutrient deficits. What I will do is methylate better. This process takes place at a cellular level, okay, subcellular level. I then have the ability to begin to aid a turnaround in these depressive and anxiety issues. So some of the literature shows that folks that were on Prozac, fluoxetine, that were moderate responders, that weren't responding real well, when they changed their diet, their lifestyle, and corrected some of these methylation pathways, 36% of them had complete remission of their depression. They were still on the medication, but while they were on the medication prior, they were not necessarily responding well. With the medication, 36% had complete remission of their depression. Up to 70% saw a significant improvement. If I can help you to methylate, we can turn around processes. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Oh my goodness gracious. Also, how CoQ is synthesized in the body. How melatonin is manufactured in the brain. And how carnitine is made. Now, ironically, all of these can indirectly play a role in mood disorders and depression. So this whole 
this complex concept of methylation and poor methylation enhances how I make these guys. I bring more central balance. I make more serotonin. Well, that's what medications, they force it. We're not doing that. We want to get you to make it better, more efficiently, rather. I make other neurotransmitters. I bring balance, and I begin to make some of these other cohabitors, cofactors in brain and neural health. Okay, how do we do that? Simply put, you need preps like or you need support such as a new prep that we've just come out with, um, either methylation essentials or I'm just going to say for right now with this type of situation, our coenzyme B complete Y because it has L M THF, the methylated form of folic acid, which is what many of us need, and especially with mood disorders and depression. So I need coenzyme B complete. Number two, I need mood essentials. Why? Glycine is a calming agent, neuroinhibitory. We have L-methionine in there. This is a methylating compound. It converts to SAMe. It makes these brain reactions happen, go forward, and it aids in the clearance when they begin to accumulate. So mood essentials, coenzyme B complete, some basic, and we can get more specific here. We can increase or add more of the methylated form of folic acid. I'll, I'll tell you, I can, I'm telling you this works and this can help you. Lastly, your lifestyle. See, the more stress you're under and you don't deal with it, you don't do some deep breathing, you don't manage it with some exercise and activity, you're exposed to a lot of chemicals or a lot of toxins, maybe I don't sleep well, I, I, I do not eat life-giving nutrients, so we've got to start putting check boxes, checks next to these boxes. I've got to, I've got to manage my stress with some deep breathing, read my Bible, read some Psalms, I've got to manage the chemicals that I'm exposed to. If I'm not sleeping well, we've got help for you in that area, sleep essentials. Um, I've got to change my diet. So this is not just about magical supplementation. So remember, I can have the genetic tendency to be a poor methylator. That's going to create problems for me in some area of my life that can be tested with blood work. Number two, my lifestyle, my upbringing, the amount of stress that I'm exposed to, my poor dietary habits, chemical exposures can now impair or just kind of encourage less methylation, right? So I've got a genetic tendency, epigenetics. Number two, all these other confounding factors aggravate it, and then boom, I'm 19 years old, and I'm in college, and I'm having anxiety attacks or panic. I'm 21, I just finished up with school, and I'm finding I'm, I'm more down and more depressed. It could be linked to these poor methylation issues, and then an accumulation of factors. I hope this helps you with understanding depression, anxiety disorders. Um, certainly, you can never bypass the role of the omega-3 fatty acids, having adequate D because they help your serotonin receptor activity. But this focus today, in other words, there's other areas and other layers to this. But this is to kind of just give you a quick in the skinny. Methylate better. I reduce the tendencies for mood disorders and depression. Be patient with this. But I believe that we can help you. Even on medications, right, you can still do this. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it helps.